Finally, we are going to explain the principle of the flash ADC. Okay, the flash ADC. Now we said that the flash ADC has a similar voltage divider scheme. All these things are responsible for bringing down the voltage to ground. But now these resistors are all of equal value. So what happens to our maximum voltage? It divides up according to the number of resistors since they're all of equal value. So here we're going to have three quarters. We call the, the maximum voltage VR or V reference. So we're going to have three quarters because there are four of them. Here we have a half. And down here we have a quarter. So whatever VR is, maximum voltage, we will have a quarter of it here, a half of it here, three quarters of it there, and the full thing there. So as I said, it's sort of like a gas gauge in your car. You have quarter, half, three quarters, and full. Okay, so if we take now these fixed voltages, take these fixed voltages, and we apply them, we apply them to some voltage comparators, And we put it to the negative input. And then we have the positive input. All connected together. Sorry, I made it so small but you should still get the picture. All right, so all the positive inputs are connected together. So here we have a variable. Here is the analog voltage that we're trying to measure. Remember the analog voltage is being measured against these fixed voltages. All right. So the fixed voltages are going to determine Fixed voltages are going to determine when the operational amplifiers switch on because we can have variable voltages at these two inputs but this is going to be a zero unless the plus is actually greater than the minus. Okay, so that's the understanding of these comparators. If the plus is greater voltage on the plus than the minus, this is going to be a one and if the plus is the same or equal or it the same or less, in other words, if the plus is actually less than the minus, then it's going to be zero. Or if they're equal, then it's going to be zero. But once the plus is greater than the minus, even by a microscopic amount, then these will be ones. So what will happen with our analog voltage here? If we put in an analog voltage, we put in an analog voltage that is less than a quarter, then all of them will be off. As it goes a pivy more than a quarter, this will become a one. When it reaches half and goes a pivy above half, the two of these will be one. And when it reaches 
three quarters and goes a pivy above three quarters, then all three of these will be one. So what's going into the encoder is first this one becomes a one with a rising voltage, then this one and this one together, and finally when the voltage rises sufficiently higher, all three of them will be one. Right? So now you can use that information to encode some binary output. Well, obviously if you only have four, which you really only have three, but what I'm saying is you get zero, where none of them are active, you get one, two, and three. So it just sort of counts slightly differently. I mean, basically you could draw a truth table, you could draw a truth table for this encoder, and you could even design it using gates. It's not all that hard a thing to understand. Because what I'm saying is, here you have a binary output, two bits. So you can have 0, 1, 2, or 3. 0, all two of them are 0, 1 is a 1, and the other one's a 0. Or you can have all two 1's, so you can get 0, 1, 2, or 3. So you would get 0 if all three inputs are 0. You would get 1 if this one was a 1. You would get 2 if this one and this one were both 1. And you would get 3 if all three, all three were a 1. So that's the understanding of how that encoder takes the information that you get here as a result of comparing the analog voltage to these various fixed voltage levels between zero and maximum. Well, you can only really go to three quarters, so you'll lose, you lose just the highest part. You'll have to set your maximum voltage slightly higher so that because you, you can only do that. So you can get an output of zero, an output of zero, which will happen from zero until it reaches a quarter then you get an output of one between a quarter and a half then between a half and three quarters you will get an output of two and then finally when it goes above three quarters once it's greater than three quarters anywhere from three quarters up to the maximum you will get three as an output so naturally that's a very poor resolution but as I was explaining to the students you need an awful lot of comparators and a very big encoder to be able to really get, get 8 bits or 16 bits but that's possible now it was very expensive when it was first invented because of the complexity and cost of these operational amplifiers these are actually operational amplifiers that are configured as comparators and what will happen is that each of these is a complex device consisting of many transistors. So in other words, to pack, say, 256 comparators into one IC chip was not possible before very, very large scale integration. So the last thing I would say about this flash ADC is that it's always controlled with a clock. A clock governs uh, when these these available so only when the clock and of course this is an enable enable input since I wrote the encoder so low I can't actually write it inside the box but I'll put an arrow that's an enable input which the clock goes to so once the clock is high the output will be available when the clock goes low it will not be available so basically what, what is happening is it's still making samples available. In other words, you get one reading, then you get another clock, you get another reading, and you get another reading. So like all ADCs, add analog to digital converters, it's missing information on, on the analog voltage between samples. And I've already showed you in the class the handshaking signals that are required to, to, to make this thing function. Now this is an extremely fast ADC which is why it's called flash. It's an extremely fast ADC because um, it instantly converts basically the sample at the same time. There is no delay while it has to conked up. So in other words whether the sample is large or small it will take the same time for it to 
go through and be present at the output. So the, the sample time, if you will, is the same for all sizes of samples, unlike the staircase or ladder ADC, um, where it has to uh, take a little longer for the counter to count up to the level of the of the of the sample that you're trying to take. So thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we'll see you soon again.